Thanks for watching this screencast on inequality and interval notation. Our objective for this screencast is learners will be able to express inequalities on the real number line in both inequality notation and interval notation. Uh, inter inequality notation is probably something that you're quite familiar with. Interval notation is probably something you've likely not seen before. Uh, so let's take a look at this. Um, we're going to look at some inequalities on the number line that are indicated by shading. Uh, so shading in the darker part of the number line. This inequality here is expressing that we should include um, all the numbers that are greater than 5, and then also include 5 by the filled-in dot here. Um, so in inequality notation, you need to pick a variable, some unknown. We usually think of x. Uh, there's no reason why you have to pick a different one, but you could. Um, and what we're writing is we're writing the set of all the values that you could replace x with that make it a true inequality statement. So what I need here is to say that x could be, and I'll write that, any number that's greater than 5 or equal to 5 or including the 5 with the filled in dot. And this is the symbol that we use. Uh, this is the greater than or equal to symbol to say that uh, any value you put in for x that's uh, in the shaded part will solve this inequality, like 6, or 7.2, or 5.01, or even 5 itself. Here's another inequality that's similar but different. Uh, it's similar in that it suggests that we want all the numbers that are greater than a specific number. But the unfilled dot here, kind of we call that the open dot, indicates that we don't want to include that value itself, just the numbers after it. So we'd write that like this, x is greater than 7, not or equal to, none of, none of this. I'll write it and then undo it. That, that wouldn't work, would it? That's not, that's not what we want. We want that without uh, the symbol. Okay, go erase that. Yeah, that's what we want. Now, these inequalities both involve being less than some number. Here I want all the numbers that are either less than or including 1 in this case. We'd write this as x is less than or equal to 1. And for this inequality, this is all the numbers that are less than 3, but not equal to 3, just the ones less than 3. This is x is less than 3. And these are the way to write these types of inequalities in inequality notation. But we want to show you a different notation, one that we're going to start using in Algebra 2, and one that almost certainly will be required of you in pre-calc trig, uh, and when you take uh, AP Calculus or wherever you go mathematically after uh, pre-calc. So let's look at these same four inequalities now in what we call interval notation. Now interval notation is simply a shorthand of writing where does the inequality begin and where does it end. So what I find helpful to do on the number lines here is to Think about where this number line ends. We're only looking at part of the number line. Uh, it, you know, it does go on forever in both directions. So in this direction over here, this inequality actually doesn't really end. It just approaches what we call infinity, positive infinity. And this way, if you think about going forever and ever in the direction of the negative numbers forever and ever, we call that negative infinity. Okay. So one really helpful thing about interval notation is you can simply write almost like an ordered pair. Where does the inequality begin and where does it end? It begins right here at 5, and it ends, well, ends is kind of debatable, isn't it? It just keeps going and going in the direction of positive infinity. So the way to write interval notation is to write your inequality almost like an ordered pair. Where does the inequality start and where does it end or where, where is it headed toward ending? Now, you need to know that the ordered pair should have either uh, you know, uh, markings at the end either way. Uh, infinity always gets the, almost looks like a set of a parentheses, a round bracket. Uh, the way to in indicate that we are including 5 in the interval is to not use a round bracket, but like a square bracket. Almost like if you hit the button uh, right next to the P on the keyboard. Okay. So this, this is the same way of saying uh, the inequality we wrote on the last page, that x is greater than or equal to 5. These mean the exact same thing. This is the inequality notation. This is the interval notation. 
And this interval notation is the way of communicating inequalities that almost certainly will be expected of you next year in pre-calc. So uh, this next example, how is it different? Well, it doesn't include that uh, value of 7, does it? Uh, but the inequality starts at 7, and it ends in the direction of positive infinity. Infinity will always get the rounded bracket. Here to say we don't include 7, we leave that dot open, we'll also use the rounded bracket there. So the difference between these two markings are to indicate either including this value or excluding this value. Now this next example, I'll write out the negative infinity and positive infinity again here. Uh, where does this inequality begin? It really begins coming from these huge negative numbers. So we'll say we need to write this inequality as from negative infinity, comma, up to 1. And negative infinity gets the rounded bracket just like positive infinity does. And since we're including 1 in the inequality, we'll put the square bracket. Here's another example. This inequality says starting with negative infinity, give me all the things up to but not including 3. So how about negative infinity to 3, and they'll both get rounded brackets. Now another thing you need to know about inequalities here is that there are ways to write the inequalities both in the inequality notation and in the interval notation. Uh, this inequality says that we need all the numbers that are bigger than negative 3 or including negative 3 but have to also be less than negative 1. So the inequality, we'll make like two columns here. The inequality column and then we'll make an interval column. So the inequality way of writing this, I remember doing this last year with my Algebra 1 students, was to say that our unknown value x has to be both greater than or equal to negative 3, but also strictly less than negative 1. And you essentially write the same thing in interval notation. Here you're just saying where does, you know, where does the inequality start and where does it end? Well, it starts at negative 3 and it ends at negative 1. And it includes a negative 3, I need a square bracket. And it doesn't include negative 1, so I need the round bracket. Now these last two compound inequalities on this screen show a different concept. That either this part of the graph or this part of the graph solve our inequality. So we need a notation that indicates that. In inequality notation, you would have to write each piece separately. And connect them with the, the word or, the conjunction or. So here I would say for this part, I would say x has to be less than or equal to 4. And then I'll say or, another way to solve this inequality is to pick a number for x that's bigger than but not equal to 7. Let's go ahead and while we're doing the inequalities, let's go ahead and look at this one down here too. Here I would say that, you know, to do this part, x has to be less than or equal to negative 4. Or, another way to solve this inequality is to pick an x that's greater than or equal to negative 2. Now, the interval notation way of writing this also includes uh, a fancy way of saying this or that. So, what I would do is I would write each of these pieces in interval notation, and I'm going to connect them with the interval notation way of saying or, and I'll show you that here in a second. So to do this example here, I would say I need from negative infinity to 4. And then I'm going to put a big old, almost looks like a U, like a capital U. That is a notation for union. It's a union of two sets. So I'm going to say this in union with the other inequality from 7 to um, infinity. And yeah, I see a mistake I made. Did you see it too? I need to include the 4 here. So this shouldn't be a rounded bracket. This should be a square bracket. Glad you caught that. So this union symbol U, if you've got two disjoint sets that both are part of the solution to the inequality, you need to join those two in interval notation with a big old union U. Let's do this last one over here. This says going from negative infinity 
to negative 4, including negative 4, so the square bracket, in union with including negative 2 up to positive infinity, like so. All right, you know what time it is. Uh, what I want you to do now is to pause this video and um, somewhere off to the side on scratch paper or something like that, write both of, or excuse me, not both, all three of these inequalities. And I want you to write them both in inequality notation and in interval notation. Pause the video, give it a shot, and then hit play and we'll check it out. All right, I'm going to go through here and hit these in inequality notation first. This graph that's in blue would be something like x or n or something is greater than or equal to 8. This graph over here on top that's on green would be all the numbers that are less than but not including negative 7. So x is less than negative 7. This compound inequality here would look something like x is less than negative 7 or x is greater than negative 1. And now let's go back and hit them in interval notation. The interval notation way of writing the blue inequality is to say from 8, including 8, to positive infinity. The interval notation way of saying this green inequality is to say I need from negative infinity up to but not including negative 7. And for the compound inequality down here, I would say I need all the things from negative infinity up to but not including negative 7 in union with the set of all the numbers that are not including negative 1 but up to positive infinity. Thanks for watching.